you guys. I'm going to try something entirely different today. <clears throat> Just kind of an experiment. I want to see how much texture I can get. It's just going to be a little abstract piece. I pulled the whole signature out of this journal that I made. So I just have several signatures of different papers in here. And they're just held to in with this hair elastic so that I can slide a signature out or one piece of paper out and work on it and then slide it back in. So this signature of papers um, is bound together. So I had to slide the whole signature out. So that's why I have it taped down so I don't... Um, media doesn't seep into the pages underneath this one in the signature. So that's what this is. It's just um, pages that I took out of my Dilutions journal because it was getting too fat. So it's kind of like a Bristol paper. And I put just a thin coat of clear gesso on it. So I'm going to just play here and um, create an abstract piece. So I have some Tim Holtz Distress, Distress Spray Stain in Faded Jeans. And I'm going to just spritz this on for a background color. And then I'm going to spray it and just get it to model out a little bit. Oh, paper's already buckling. Interesting. Doesn't buckle that much when it's in the journal. I don't understand why it's buckling here. But it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever happens, right? Yeah, I'm just going to dry that off. Maybe it'll lay back down. It's a really pretty color. Alright, now I'm just going to take some pieces of aluminum foil and crunch it up real good. And this is going to be my texture. I don't want any real super big lumps, but and you know, aluminum foil has a duller side and a shinier side, so I'm going to put it down with the duller side facing up because I think it might take paint better. I don't know what we're going to see. And I'm just going to make some random shapes with it. Okay, that was probably too small of a piece. And then get it unballed up. tip. Don't put it in a tight ball. Just scrunch it up from one end. It's hard to get it out of the ball once you ball it up in a ball ball. Alright. I'm just going to kind of mold this into an amorphous shape here. You don't want any straight edges. Not that they probably would even show up as straight edges, but so just scrunch it up and then pull it back out. I just kind of scrunched it from both ends. Some ridges in it, and so 
So there's some high spots to catch the paint if I want to highlight those. I think I'm just going to keep it like that. All right, I'm going to glue this down with super heavy gel matte. Okay, I think everything's stuck down good enough. Where it overlapped, the pieces overlapped, I didn't want to stick the foil to the foil as easily, so I better put my apron on. At least I have some place to wipe my hands. This cute apron, you guys. It's from Canvas Corp Brands. It says be creative every day. It's just a canvas apron. I love it because when I remember to put it on, <laughs> I just wipe my hands on it. And a lot of times I wipe my brushes on it. It's just, it's going to become its own work of art eventually. And then I'll just get another one. Okay, so now I want some more texture on top of the foil, so I'm going to use this heavy gesso and an old brush. And I'm just going to spread it on and around it without pushing out the texture too much. Just, I want to make sure the media that I'm going to put on top is going to stick and so the gesso will help that. And it's a little thicker in this lid so I'm just taking it out of the lid. It's a thick gesso, this Studio 71 that's not glued down right there. Very good. Um, I did use my heat tool for a little bit to finish drying this gesso off. It's dry pretty much. There's little spots maybe here and there that aren't completely dry. So, ready for another layer. And one thing that I haven't used in a long time is my hot glue gun. So I think I'm just going to make little... Kind of dots and marks with the hot glue. This gun is so old. I think those kind of stringy ribbons might be kind of cool if they pick up any texture. Put some on the foil too. I'll just speed this up. I'm just putting little dots and dragging them out. And So I don't burn myself. This cool little holder 
My dad made it for my mom years ago. My mom and dad are both gone now, but I have a lot of cool little gadgets that he made. Just made it out of wood and put a ceramic tile there. Okay, so we need to wait for this glue to set up. Hoping it's not going to peel off the paper. I don't think it'll peel off the paper. I, it might come off the foil. That I'm not sure about. So I'm just going to wait a couple seconds and we'll come back and continue. Okay, here's a first. You won't see this very often, but since my hands are already pretty blue, <laughs> And I'm going to use some more sprays. And I just did my nails last night. I thought my son brought home a bunch of these disposable plastic gloves. I don't know how good they are. He brought them home from work. So he threw a bunch on my art table. So I'm using them. So I'm going to go back in again with the Dispress Spray Stain in Faded Jeans. I'm going to come up pretty high because I want to just leave those drips, I think like that and then I have Glimmer Mist by Tattered Angels um, what color is this rose gold and this has the concentrated sparkly stuff I don't know if it's glitter or mica or what it is so they say shake it back and forth this way so that the glitter doesn't go up in the tube of the sprayer. And we're going to put some of this on, concentrate it kind of on the foil area. And then I'm just going to rub it in. Okay, I'm going to dry this. Not quite dry, but I'm liking the way the Glimmer Mist kind of mixed with the Faded Jeans. So I'm just going to add a little bit more Faded Jeans and try and move that with my Okay, now I still have all these dots of glue which when I'm drying they are melting again so you have to watch for that might have to wait a little bit longer in between the distress distress I'm having a hard time saying that is spray stain well in some places it's sticking to the glue maybe it was just wet there I thought it wasn't sticking to the glue but it kind of is it's just the stains not completely dry. I'm going to add just a touch more of the Glimmer Mist. I like those dots. I hope they don't fade out too much. I'm just partially pushing down on the sprayer. Just trying to get more drippage kind of coming out of there. I know it doesn't matter this overspray, but I don't want to get into it and then end up putting it somewhere that I don't want it to be. I'm going to take this out and do it this way. 
a little more control that way. Put it, it kind of beads up on that glue, which I guess makes sense. I may have to go to the acrylic paint to get paint color to stick to the glue. I'm liking the texture this foil has given me. Pretty cool. You can get a much higher level of texture this way than you would with texture paste. You'd have to put lots and lots of layers of texture paste to to get this much texture. I would encourage you if you have supplies that you haven't used in a while or you always use in the same way have fun and experiment and play with your art supplies it can just lead to so many interesting discoveries I mean I've had people say to me but if it doesn't turn out then it's a waste of supplies but you know what it's really not because you're going to learn something from every thing you try, whether it turns out or not. Maybe part of it turns out, and you can repeat that part on another project, and you know that it's going to give you the results that you want. I mean, yes, art supplies can be costly, but in this case, okay, we're using the sprays, I made a whole bunch of, of acrylic sprays myself, and it's just, it was leftover old craft acrylic paint, you know, the little $2 bottles of acrylic paint, and water and alcohol, and then I got some ball bearings, you could use little beads, whatever you have, something little and round to put inside so that it will mix, because the paint will settle at the bottom. I tried three different brands of spray bottles and these are by far the absolute best. They have non-clogging nozzles and they're Soho Urban Artist Spritz Bottles. I think I got eight. There's like a set of eight of them. Fairly inexpensive, like maybe 50 cents a piece or 75 cents or something. Not, not expensive. I got them from Jerry's Artorama. And they don't clog in there. A nice fine spray. So, point being, you don't have to spend five, six, seven dollars for a bottle of um, acrylic spray. You can just, you know, spend a couple bucks and make your own. I mean, water is plentiful, <laughs> alcohol is super cheap, and use what you have. This foil. I had bread wrapped in it and so when I used up the bread it's like well why should I throw that foil away you know so I just wiped it off and now it's going on here so you guys know me I don't waste anything and it's not I guess I am kind of frugal because I live on social security so you know sometimes we have to watch our pennies Yes, I do have an awful lot of art supplies because I've been creating art for four decades. So I have a lot, I have a lot, but that doesn't stop me from buying more. Anyway, just give stuff a try. Don't be afraid to experiment. It's just so much fun and it's so rewarding. And share it with other people because it's it can be very inspirational for other people to try something maybe that they haven't tried because they're not sure how it's going to turn out. So, okay. Have fun. Play with your art supplies. What are we going to do about this glue that nothing seems to be sticking to? I'm going to try some... What do I have here? 
This is Tattered Angels High Impact Paint. I'm not sure if they still make this or not. It's light gold. And the lid's stuck. Oh, of course it is. My handy dandy. There we go. Robo grips. Oh yeah. Alright, I'm gonna just go in the lid here. Let's see what we can get on those. This might be too light. It might be too light. Maybe it's because I'm going from the lid. No, it's pretty much the same. All right. Try it with a brush. And if it doesn't work with a brush, then I'll switch to a different paint. This seems to be kind of transparent. It's a weird paint. I really haven't worked with it very much before. It's thick, but kind of sticky. I don't know. Yeah. Almost the consistency of syrup. I don't like it. Alright. Sorry, Tattered Angels. I'm sure that it works for a lot of things, but it's not working for this. So, I'm going to take it off. Grab a baby wipe. I'm just going to dab it off. No big deal, right? Alright. What else do I have over here? I know I have metallic paints. That's well, an awful lot of copper. Oh, what's this? Black pearl. Let's try this. I'm mixing it up really good because... I didn't even know I had it, so I'm sure it hasn't been used in a very long time. This is DecoArt Dazzling Metallics in Black Pearl. I'm just gonna, ooh, that's really pretty. It's nice and thick also. Get that. Let's see what this does. Oh yes. That's what I'm talking about. I'm just finding those little dots of glue and hitting them with this paint. So I'm just going to speed through this process. I'm going to kind of smear it around, around the outside of each dot so that I don't just have globs of Obviously, have to be careful of heat drying because it's just going to soften the the uh, glue. So I'm going to let it dry by itself for a little bit. I think I want to. I know it's starting to get dark, but I want to just go around the edges with some. Surprise, surprise! Payne's gray acrylic. I'm just going to put some on my mat and put it on my finger. I'm starting to not be able to see where my tape is. 
See now that I just wiped that off the paint right off that glue. So I really thought hot glue would do okay, but I may have to spray it with some fixative or something to keep the paint on there. Because everywhere I'm touching, I'm wiping it off. I'm going to use a baby wipe and see if I can't just soften that now. Gonna have to go back over those glue spots. This paint's gray seems darker than usual. Maybe I just really put it on a lot heavier than I usually do. Almost looks almost black. Okay. Put that black pearl back on here. Maybe it's better just dabbing it on with my finger instead of using a brush. I told you it was going to be an experiment, guys, so I hope you're not bored to tears. See, I can make the mistakes and then you don't have to. Speaking of, if there's anything that you guys would like to see me do for a Fast Fun Friday video, leave me a comment and make some suggestions because, I mean, I, I do this stuff for you guys. Most of it. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing it anyway, but I do give some thought to what I do and don't film thinking of you guys and what you might like to see. So, let me know what you'd like to see. Leave me a comment. Tell me, I want to know. All right. I think finger dabbing on the glue was a better idea. Just seems like it's going on thicker that way and staying better. What I want is for that paint to stay on there so that I can go over and try and pick up some of those little tails of glue that trailed off of the glue gun. That's still not completely dry. All right, I'm gonna let this dry for a bit and think about what I want next. Okay, while I was off camera, I just dropped some more of this rose gold glimmer mist on here and dried it straight down so that the droplets didn't move. And it looks like rust to me, and I really like it, so I'm just going to do some more and show you what I did. I did get most of the blue off of my hands, and I'm gloveless, so... We'll see how that goes. So that's all I did to get this, which I love. Okay, I'll be back. All my drops are dry. And again, what I did, I would just hold my heat tool up and down this way directly over the droplet so that it stayed in one place and dried and it didn't run and dilute so I like that I like
like that a lot. I'm still thinking about lightness. Um, I've kind of given up on picking up these strings. You can see them up close. Oh, the other thing I did off camera before I did the droplets is I just gave the piece two light coats of Krylon Workable Fixative. If you watch me, you know I use it quite often to keep things where I want them. To fix one layer so I can go over top with another layer and not have things move on me or be changed in any way. So I did that and then I did the droplets and then I did the droplets that you saw me do. So I think this is close to done. I want to pick up some of the texture here and I'm I'm thinking gesso but I don't know if I really want what you know what I want I think I want turquoise somewhere I have where is it patina this is really old you probably can't find it anymore it's hallmark home decor by Delta antiquing gel so it's a patina antiquing gel let's see what happens with this I think that would look really cool turquoise would go great with these colors it may bring some lightness at the same time as I can pick up some more of this texture highlight that texture yeah caps even broken off hmm see what we got well it's still liquid I know I've ha I have had this 20 years you guys um, yeah I want to use my finger I'm gonna put the glove back on let's see I know it's designed to be put on and then wiped off like if you were gonna antique a piece of painted furniture or something, which I think that's what I used it for. So let's see, I'm just going to dab at it with a paper towel. It's subtle, huh? It is subtle. Maybe we leave more on. I like that. Oh, that's a lot. Just really lightly. Just catching the tops of those ridges. Yeah, I think I like it. I keep getting too much on my finger. Kind of pushing it down this first pass and then I'll dab it with the paper towel and then I'll put more on. Normally I dip into the lid but it's so old that I'm kind of thinking what's on the lid is old. Too old. Alright. And push that down in a little bit. Take some off. See what we think. Well, maybe that's enough on that one. Oh, less is more, right? Or more is more. Okay, I like it. What'll happen if we spray this into that? Kind of want to fill up some of those valleys. I don't 
don't know this antiquing stuff. I guess it'll dry with the heat tool. I'm thinking maybe it's done. Or maybe all right. It's just an experiment, right? And if I do something and I hate it, then <laughs> whatever. What I'm gonna do, I have transparent yellow iron oxide fluid acrylic. I'm gonna spatter it with that because it kind of is staying in the whole rusty genre, kind of sorta. I'm gonna use a fan brush and because you see like the gold yellowy color before it goes to complete rust. It might not even show up. I don't think it is. Well, so much for ruining it. I'm not because I'm not even seeing it. I just need bigger spatters, I guess. Yeah, no, you don't really see it that much. Okay, well, I'm committed to it now, so I'm just going to put more and move on. See it everywhere else on my table. Okay. We tried, right? That didn't do what I wanted it to. You probably can't even see it because maybe right here it kind of mixes in with that rose gold. It's almost the same temperature and that's not really showing up. Back to the drawing board. Alright, I'm going to mix that same transparent yellow iron oxide with some gesso and make it less transparent. I'm going to splatter it again. I think that will work better. Let's water down some gesso. Grab some yellow. Can you see that? Yeah, I guess you can. I didn't want stark white drips, but I think this might be just what I need. I hope. Yeah, maybe so. See, you just have to keep going, guys. About like little grouping of smaller spatters. I can even go a little lighter with some. I like that. I do like that. Even some across the foil. You know what? I think that did it. I think it did. Sorry for all my wiping, but it, it just distracts me when I can't see what's going on. Drips, spots everywhere. Okay, I'm taking the tape off. Hopefully it won't rip my paper. It helps to pull tape off at a 45 degree angle when you're taking it off. See how it's like this? It really helps prevent pulling up the paint or the paper. You know what, you guys? I like it. I do. And that worked taking that whole signature down and I didn't have to worry about 
all that stuff going through. It did kind of sink through, but that's okay because that'll get gessoed. Not crazy about this black washi tape that I bound that signature together with, but you know what? I have a whole bunch of this gesso and paint over here. I'm just going to go over it with that since it's the first. in this signature. You may see part of that, or you will probably see part of that. There, that's better. I'm going to pick it up so you can see the texture better up close. And I'll put some stills at the end like always. Those light spatters did it for me. It just finished it. Thanks for watching and watching me go back and forth a million times to try to figure out what I wanted to do. So I hope you enjoyed watching the process. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and leave me a comment. Again, let me know what you'd like to see for a Fast Fun Friday video or any other comment that you have about today's project. I love to hear your thoughts. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.